Hey guys, Gus here, bringing you another painting tutorial. Um, this time we're going to be learning how to paint red with this great new miniature from the Infinity Starter Box. This is the Nomads Mobile Brigade. I play Nomads, uh, so it was very, very uh, great to have Nomads in the new Starter Box. Fantastic miniature. I'll talk more about it later. But really, really great uh, sculpt and just really good quality. So I went ahead and uh, base coated the entire miniature with Raven Black from the Minotaur line and then just made sure that I, I, I got all those tiny little nooks and crannies with the uh, thinned down black paint again. So the first thing I'm going to go ahead and do, um, of course because I'm going to be painting the armor itself red, is base coat the entire miniature with uh, Regal Red, um, which is from the Minotaur paint line. And it's kind of a, a dark red but has kind of a purple tint to it as well. And the reason why I chose this particular red is because I'm going to be shading with purples and you'll, that'll become apparent as the, uh, as the video progresses but primarily using the airbrush just to get down a very nice smooth base coat which is what they're, they're great for um, of course you can always just use thin down layers of, of paint from a brush it'll just take a hell of a lot, a lot longer so making sure that I'm doing it in stages as well not just blasting on a whole bunch of paint in one go so it's really like three or four really thin coats with the airbrush to make sure that the, that, that base coat is as smooth as possible because of course whenever you paint with glazes the smoother the base coat the uh, the better the actual glaze and the paint flows on the miniature and that's exactly what you want it to do when you want to start you know moving paint about on the surface so before I start doing the red I'm actually going to now pick out all the little um, areas in between the armor with midnight blue so these are areas that aren't armored and have sort of like a hexagonal pattern on them it's kind of like a like an underskin underneath the, the the body armor that this guy's wearing so i'm just going to go ahead and pick those out and that's because i don't want it to distract um and also it will accentuate the the actual red when i start painting it on the miniature so and this is one of the much older colors from games workshop it's sort of a very odd blue it's kind of also got a iridescent purple tone to it and that's the, the palette that I'm using for this miniature is from red to blue and either side to purple as well. So the red, blues and purples, that's the kind of palette I'm going for. Um, so the miniature then, absolutely great. I'm telling you guys now, if you, if you go out and you spend your money on Infinity Miniatures, um, they are, in my opinion at least, the best metal miniatures you're going to get. The, the quality is superb. They're like really, really damn good. It's actually intimidating to paint these miniatures. They are that well detailed and they are, you know, that good quality. So, you know, even I find it a little bit intimidating to paint these. So, I'm just going to go ahead, pick out all those areas, making sure I'm being as accurate as possible but because, of course, even the simplest painting techniques used accurately will always make a miniature look good. So always make sure that your painting is concentrating on accuracy. And I always like to stress getting that base color, sorry, that base coat down as smooth as possible. Okay, so now I'm going to start shading all of the armor using a mix of Chaos Black and Lich Purple from the Games Workshop range. I'm going to thin it right down with Glaze Medium, the Lamium Medium. Um, if you haven't seen my video on, on how to prepare glazes, I'll put a, uh, a link in the description below. And all we're doing now is we're picking out our shaded areas. So any area that we want to be shaded or to, to catch shadow, we're now picking out with this mixture. And it's a one-to-one it's -one mixture of black and, uh, and purple. I lie, sorry, two-to-one mixture, two purple to one black. So as you can see, I'm going to start filling in all the little nooks and crannies. And, and as it's like a, uh, it's so thin, you can actually put it into the recess, like that sort of wire shape on his chest. And also you'll see the grooves in the helmet. So by laying down the, uh, the shadows first, it really helps us establish where we want the light and the dark to be on the miniature. So laying down the shadows, then you know, okay, right, this area needs to be light, you know, all the opposites and, and that kind of thing. Just getting into all the recesses. And the nice thing with these miniatures, they've got lots of very, very interesting curves on the armor and, you know, like different areas. And you'll notice from, you know, uh, in, in, in a few minutes when, when I apply the shadows to the sort of the sides of the of the knee plating and the ankle plating it's got these like grooves that would like naturally catch the light and shadows so it's a very very interesting miniature to paint lots of fun to paint um, and actually a lot easier to paint than i thought and that's purely because the quality is so good because the texture of the miniature is so smooth they've concentrated on quality control getting these miniatures out so it's an absolute pleasure to paint really really great miniature to paint so I'm not going to um, pay too much attention to the feet because when I uh, when I eventually get around to finishing this miniature properly, uh, I'm going to be weathering the uh, the feet and make them a bit chipped and cracked and dusty because uh, I'm going to do desert bases for these guys. So you'll see I'll probably be a bit sloppy with my work on the feet. 
So just getting around all the armor plates and getting this uh, the, the, sh the shade in. Um, and as always, guys, doing the skin test on the old blazers works works wonders, making sure it, it falls into the recess of your skin. As you can see, I tested on my thumb there, um, making sure it's the right consistency uh, to be used for glazing. So with the shadows as well, what I normally do, again with all my glazers, is I'll normally do uh, th uh, three down and three up. So I'll do this first coat of, shadow, uh, of shading, and I won't show the actual footage of me doing it like you know the second and third time, just a waste of time, because it's the same thing over and over. So it normally takes about a good two to three coats of shading to get um, things nicely, nicely dark and nicely shaded and to make sure you get that contrast. Because of course we're dealing with miniatures, we're dealing with something that's 32 mils tall, you have to push contrast. If you don't push contrast, it's not going to stand out on the table. If you're dealing with busts and much larger scale miniatures, you can get away with more realistic style painting. But I prefer the sort of um, heavy metal kind of style of painting. You know that already. So there we go. So getting into all the nooks and crannies and one of the one of the great things when you play shadows as well is always remember that if you can't decide where a shadow should be just make it up go a shadow would look interesting there and then put a shadow there so it doesn't necessarily have to be 100 percent accurate because light can be coming from all different directions you don't know where it's going to be coming from it doesn't always come from above if somebody's walking on the corridor and there's lights and whatever you so say if you can't decide where the shadow should be just pick out an area and see if it looks interesting because it's glazes, you can work with the paint, you can move it around in the miniature. It's good stuff. So, now as you can see, uh, like I mentioned before, because the paint is so thin, I can actually use it to, to sink into the recesses of the actual helmet um, and all the, the tiny little um, cheek pieces and uh, and down around the, uh, the the sort of bottom end, the mouth end of the, uh, of the helmet piece itself. Um, as I said, guys, these miniatures are extraordinarily detailed absolutely great stuff and an absolute pleasure to paint so now onto the backpack um, again picking out all the uh, all the shadow areas and just as with all glazing don't overwork the paint put the paint down move it to where it needs to be and leave it alone if you overwork the paint it tends to dry and leave watermarks on the actual miniature itself so make sure you put your paint down move it to where it needs to be drag it down and then just leave it do not overwork it because it will dry so quickly and you'll just end up with like smudging watermarks and it doesn't look 100% and your, your transitions don't don't end up smooth and, and what have you. So <clears throat> again, what, I'm, what I meant about sort of interesting shadows, you'll see what I'm doing on the top of the backpack here is I couldn't really decide where the shadow should be. So I'm just kind of, you know, plastering in some shadows here and there, uh, which will again help determine where I'm gonna put my highlights later on in the video. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that two more times um, and shade down the miniature further um, and skip over those parts. Okay, so here's the miniature shaded down twice more. So as you can see, the shading is a lot more pronounced now, um, down to the sort of a dark, purpley, black kind of shading. Um, and now what we're going to do is move on to Angelic Blood, or Samurai Red. Really, really great red color. I would highly recommend you pick this color up from the Minotaur range. It is a really, really unique red. Like I said, like a Samurai Armor Red. It's very cool. Um, I really like to use it for Infinity. It just it just suits the theme. It suits, it suits everything. So I'm going to add a couple of drops of uh, Lamy Medium, getting it to uh, where I want it to be. And all we're doing now is simply the opposite of before. So we're going to drag away from the shadows. We're going to put the paint down and move the paint to where it needs to be, onto the most prominent points. And this this is a, a transition that happens really quickly. You'll see the difference just between his right leg, which I'm painting now, and the left leg just after one coat of this. And, we, and we're going to really start pushing the highlights towards the, uh, the end of the tutorial. So... Because this is the first highlight, you can work on, on general areas and you can almost overlap the shadow slightly when you apply the paint to drag it to the, the prominent points where it would catch the light. So you can kind of overlap on the first one. The second and third you don't really want to because then you're going up to the edges, you know what I mean? That's a lot more specific. So now it's more, more the sort of general highlights. And again, because we've established where the highlights are going to be by using our shadows, this is where it can get really, really interesting and you can really start to, you know, See your, see your miniature come to life in front of you. It's really great. And again, especially with these Infinity Miniatures, they've got such interesting curves, such interesting like prominent points and details, and they're just an absolute pleasure to paint. I mean, look at that difference already between his right leg and his left leg. It's already pronounced. So the thing that gets, that gets difficult, I always find is quite tricky, is when you've got large round areas, so like his shoulder pads and like those sort of uh, circular pieces on the sides of his legs, um, because you don't want them to be overly shaded nor overly highlighted if that makes sense i don't know i'm, I'm talking absolutely gibberish but because you, you don't want the shadow to extend too far 
up because it's a rounded surface so it's trying to get that balance of where the shadow should be as a, and, and where the highlight should be so the main reason uh, I've chosen purple for this as opposed to blue because I mean you could you could shade down with with any analogous color to, to red you know either the blue spectrum or the purple spectrum um, the main reason is because purple's warmer than blue and I wanted to go for a real contrast because when I start highlighting I'll use very very sharp white highlights so very cold highlights and very warm shadows the reason for this is because I wanted it to look more like a cybernetic suit. It's connected to the wearer. It's not a robot. There's a person inside there. So one of that sort of like, um, you know, energy inside the suit kind of coming forth and then prominent points look hard and armored and that kind of thing. So that's why I wanted that softer, warmer sort of shading on the miniature. And that's something really interesting you can do is you can play around with uh, your, your various and that is shading colors and you can play around with, with, you know, hard and soft highlights and and uh, warmer or cool highlights and things like that and really get some you know very very interesting effects on your uh, on your miniatures so again as you can see here uh, just um, going up to all the prominent points opposite the shadows you know middle of the breastplate down to the extremities of the of the individual um, segmented plates along his abdomen um, and, and then all the all the little details in between now is when I'll start to pick them out with the uh, with the uh, angelic blood again really really amazing color highly recommended if you like red, if you paint red, this is a red you should own. Simple as. Even if you just go out and buy this one paint, really, really good stuff. Um, so now what I'm going to do is uh, obviously working on the hands, and then eventually I'll finish the mask and picking out all the details. Uh, and, and again, with with the with the uh, with the highlighting, I just wanted to go with something sort of um, you know interesting on the helmet. So I kind of picked center forward. You know, you want to highlight towards the center and then to the front, and that's just to make the face stand out because the face. And the head area is always a focal point, right? You know what I mean? So I just kind of chose that. I mean, it could easily be highlighted up to all of the all of the little nooks and crannies and edges along the helmet, but I just chose center and front because it's easier. So I'm really moving on to my second um, second coat here. And as you can see, um, it'll really start to stand out now. Um, and then what I'll probably do is I'll probably skip ahead and uh, not show you the next two coats of this. And then we'll move on to the really, really light highlights. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add some um, of the white from the Minotaur range. The reason I'm using the Minotaur paints again is because they come pretty thin. They're really quite thin paints because they're meant for airbrushes. So you mix them up together. They're really nice and thin. Add a little bit of, um, oh, a bit more angelic blood here. Just trying to get the mixture right. Not too pink, obviously. You don't want it to look, you don't want your miniature to look pink, do you? You're trying to paint radio, not pink. Tentacle pink and shit. But um, anyway, adding some more medium, getting it to the consistency I wanted. And now what we're going to do with the highlights is we're really going to concentrate on the most prominent points. Really starting to drag them in now. We're not, we're not essentially edge highlighting, but we're almost doing glazing right near the very edge, you know what I mean, of the actual, um, of the pieces. So we're doing very, very fine glazing here. Um, and again, very important with the lighter colors not to overwork them. The lighter colors always have problems if you overwork the paint when you're glazing. They always end up with watermarks and end up with problems. So put it down, move it to where it needs to be and leave it alone. And what you'll start to see happen now is the miniature will really start to stand out because we're really starting to push these highlights. We're not up to pure white yet, we will be, um, but you'll, you'll see it start to really stand out. And at this stage, you can really see the depth of color that I, 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 I mentioned previously, you know, the, the dark purples up to the sort of light, you know, samurai red kind of color, emphasizing the sort of, you know, yeah, warrior kind of thing and all that, all that bullshit. But, um, so yeah, so really concentrating on the edges now. And with this paint, what I'll do is I'll do, um, one coat of, one coat of glaze along the, along the edges and then perhaps pick out some of the more prominent edges you know on a, on a second round with this uh, with this particular color with this like sort of like light red pink color and then for the, the final highlight itself I'm gonna go pure white the white needs to be very very thin down again the minute is pretty thinned but you want to be adding some lamia medium to this and really thinning it down and if needs be cleaning your brush quite a lot in between um, applying all the edge highlights because now we're gonna go literally and start picking out all those most prominent points that we that we moved the uh, the, the the light red pink paint to before now we're going to really hit the edges and it's almost like glaze edge highlighting you're not just doing straight um straight edges you're putting the paint onto an edge and actually dragging it up that edge so you've got a transition 
on the actual edges themselves, if that makes any sense. But, you know, it'll become more apparent when you watch it in the video. So, that's what I'm doing now, and this is going to be the last stage of doing the armor. And, as I mentioned before, I'm trying to get the most prominent points to look hard, and to look like armor, and to look sharp, and to look cold, and the recesses to look more warm and organic. If the camera will actually pick it up. And you'll see that some of the um, some of the highlights are do uh, a bit harsher than some of the other ones, um, and this is purely because I want certain certain areas to, to stand out a bit more. Like his leg that's forward, I wanted it to stand out a bit more than the leg that's towards the rear. And highlighting the abdomen plates, I'm highlighting his right side again because the way I want the, the the miniature to sort of angle and flow and catch the light. And again, that's just something you can play around with, you know, and you can end up with with interesting effects. Going to the most prominent points now up to the tops of the shoulder blades, the groove in between the shoulder blades, as well as the uh, as the, um, the the plate armor that crosses over the, the tops of the shoulders. So, um, with this again, you can really go in and pick out all the tiny little details um, with your uh, with your white paint. And just, with, with curved surfaces, always just work towards where you've been highlighting before. If you can't figure out where to put the white paint, say for example on his biceps, just work to where you've been putting the highlight before and, and, and drag a tiny little sort of sliver of white along those points. So <clears throat> getting towards the end now, um, highlighting the hands, finishing off the uh, the armor on the arms and then I always do the face last. And you'll see on the face I make a bit of a mistake, I, I over highlight the, uh, the, the the edges around the, the sort of mouthpiece um, and I'll, I'll go and I'll, I'll correct that later on. So onto the backpack now, same again, just um, highlighting the most prominent edges that are uh, that, have, that have been highlighted up to before. Um, and again, you'll see on the backpack I'm highlighting one side more than the other just because of the angle of it. I wanted it to you know, catch the light a bit more. The right side kind of is angled up more than the left. So onto the face now, and you'll see what I mean if the camera will focus, um, is how it will pick up the, uh, how I've messed up the actual front grid. I've put way too much white paint on there. And the thing is, if, if you put too much white paint on, you can always go back with a glaze of uh, the original color, like your uh, your pink or your or your, your darker reds, um, and just glaze over the white. And, and generally, that will fix the problem, because you can you almost apply it like a wash, so it will sink in the recesses, and it will stain the white color a bit darker, so it doesn't look so full on. So just going in with a bit of um, regal red now, just to pick out those recesses. Uh, where I've messed up with the white paint. And after I've done that, I'm pretty happy with the red armor. Um, and that's it, guys. I hope you've enjoyed the tutorial.